you all are welcome once again to this channel at Mipo Tutorial. Now, on our topic, mapping and functions. Remember, a hashtag, you don't need to be a scholar to get an A. Now, mapping and functions, part three. Now, remember, in the previous part, we talked about the types of mapping, which is one-to-one -one mapping and onto mapping. And I introduced to us a little bit of composite mapping. So in this part, we are going to be looking at composite mapping and the inverse functions of mapping. Now, starting with composite mapping, let's use these examples to familiarize ourselves with the meaning of composite mapping. Now, it says, let the mapping f as a to b. That means the function that joins set a to b and the function g that joins set b to c. Let it be, let these be the mappings on the set of real numbers defined by the f of x, which joins a to b is what is x plus one, and g of y is the function that joins b to c, which is what y plus one raised to the power of two, and we are asked to find g of f. We also find g of f. Now, this is the calculation, this is the solving which we'll be coming back to, but let us um, use a very clear screen to solve this. Now, we're asked to find g of f. Now, g of f can be written as like so. So we can write g of x to be g is a function of f of x. Is that okay? g is a function of f of x. Now, what is the formula for f of x according to our question? The formula for f of x according to the question is what is x plus one. Can we see that? So f of x equals x plus one. Okay, so we put it into our formula here, x plus one. Is that okay? Now, this g x plus one, if we notice it is synonymous to g of y. So we can say g x plus one, is equal to g of y, right? Good. So we can say x plus one equals y, right? Because this is equal to this, right? So we can say x plus one equals y. So instead of y, I can write y to be what to x to be x plus one. Recall that according to our example or to our question, g of y is given as y plus 1 raised to the power of 2, right? So instead of y in this formula, instead of y in this function, I can represent that y to, what, to be what? To be x plus 1. So meaning I have something like g into x plus 1 represented as, instead of y plus 1 squared, now right? instead of y, I write what? x plus 1 into brackets plus 1, everything raised to the power of 2, right? Okay, so what do I do here? So I open this bracket, open this bracket, plus one plus one will give us what? X plus two raised to the power of two, right? So X plus two can be written like this. So I can write it like X plus two. And I can also write X plus two. That's X plus two raised to the power of two means X plus two in two places. So X times X will give me, give me X squared plus 2 times x to give me 2x plus x times 2 will give me what? To give me 2x plus what? Plus 2 times 2 will give me what? To give me 4. So my answer is what is x squared plus 4x plus 4. So Remember, g of g into x plus 1 is a product or, or is a result of g of f. So I can say my g of f is equal to what? It's equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4, which is what we got here. So I'm sure we understand this. Let's look at our calculation again. Okay, beautiful. Let's go on to our next example. Our next example says... Our next example says, if f and g are mappings defined over the set of real numbers, f of x equals x plus 2, 
and j of x equals 2x squared plus 1 respectively. Find the value of x for which f of g equals g of f. f of g equals g of f. Now let us go on to, uh, let's solve this question using a clear screen. Now we know that we know that f of g equals g of f. f of g equals g of f is the same as f of g equals g of f. So f g equals g f can be written as f of g equals g of f. Is that okay? f of g equals g of f. Now our f of g like this f into bracket g of x right equals then we can write our g of f into something like this g into bracket f is a function of what of x okay now according to our question g of x is equal to 2x squared plus one so instead of g of x in this formula i can write it as what as f into bracket 2x squared plus one equals g i can write that into brackets instead of f of x according to our question f of x is what is x plus two so instead of that i can say g into what instead of writing f of x here i can write x plus two so we have successfully turned this fg and gf into a mathematical into mathematical notations into f into bracket two x squared plus one and g into bracket what x plus two do we understand that? Now, our major aim is to bring about a formula comparing f of g and g of f so that we can be able to find the value of our x value in this question. So let's go on. Now, given that fx equals x plus 2, our f into g of x can be represented as follows. So remember, our f of x is what is x plus 2. f of x equals x plus 2. g of x equals 2x squared plus 1. So now, this is actually telling us that this is f. This is actually telling us that this is x plus 2. So instead of x, I'll represent my x with what? With g of x, right? And my g of x is what is 2x plus 1. So instead of x, in this case, I write what? 2x squared plus 1. Then, the, of course, there's 2 there. So if I put this in brackets, then I add what? Plus 2. So this is the... Um, so now, simplifying this, 1 plus 2 give me 3. So I have 2x squared plus 3. So this is the value for f of g of x. Is that okay? Now let's get the value for g f of x. Now remember, our f of x is what is x plus 2. In this case, we'll be using the formula for g of x, which is what? Which is 2x squared plus 1. So, and our f of x is what is x plus 2. So anywhere I see x, I put what? x plus 2. So in this case, I have 2 into what? Into x plus 2 squared plus 1. Is that okay? Now, that's exactly what we did here. 2 into x plus 2 plus 1. So when you expand x plus 2 squared, it gives you x squared plus 4x plus 4. If you open this bracket to your 2, 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times 4x is 8x, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is what is 9. So the final result for our g f of x is what is 2x squared plus 8x plus 9. So g of x equals to 2x. So now our question which says f of g and g of f can be written like so. Can be written in this form. 2x squared plus 3, the value for f of g, and 2x squared plus 8x plus 9. So this is what we have. Now, in our next 
example in our next slide we'll be looking at how to find the value of our x so what we have successfully done is that we have represented the formula of f of g and the formula of g of x together okay now and that is what we have here clearly written 2x squared plus 3 2x squared plus 8x plus 9 Okay, so if I collect like times here, this 2x squared, I cross it over here, what do I have? I have minus 2x squared plus 3, taking it to the over plus 3. Okay, I'm leaving plus 3 here. I'm bringing plus 9 also here. What do I have? I have minus 9. So 2x squared cancels 2x squared. Plus 3 minus 9 is what? Is minus 6 equals 8x, right? So if I have 8x equals minus 6, if I divide both sides by 8, divide both sides by 8. 8 cancels 8. My x is equal to minus, what can go between 6 and 8? Of course, 2. 2 in 6 is what? 3. And 2 in 8 is what? Is 4. So my answer is what? Minus 3 over 4. So we have used we have used f of g formula and g of f formula. We have compared it together to find the value of our x. Wonderful. Now, the third example on composite mapping, which says, let the mappings f and g on the set of real numbers be defined by f of x equals 2x squared minus 3, and g of x equals x plus 1. The first question here is to find g of f. To find g of f, like we've talked so far, g of f can be, can be written as g as a function of f of x. And what is f of x? f of x is 2x squared minus 3. So instead of f of x, I write 2x squared minus 3. Now using g of x, which is what? Which is x plus 1. x plus 1, right? So all this 2x squared plus minus 3 is put into this x. That's why we have 2x squared minus 3, then plus 1. Minus 3 plus 1 will give us minus 2. So this is wrong. This should give us, this should give us minus 2. Okay, so that is the answer for the first one, which is g of f. And the second one, which is f of g, f of g can also be written as f into brackets. That's f is a function of g of x. What is g of x? g of x is x plus 1. But what is the formula for f of x? The formula for f of x is 2x squared. Okay, let's write it here. So we have x plus 1, right? And the formula for our f of x, the formula for our f of x is giving us 2x squared minus 3. So we can write this. So what do we do? We put this x plus 1 into x here, right? So we have 2 into what? Into x plus 1 squared minus 3. And that's exactly what we have here. Is that okay? So when we find x plus 1 squared, we get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, let me quickly solve x plus 1 squared. x plus 1 squared is x plus 1 in two places because some might understand why some might find it mysterious how we got that. So x times x is what is x squared. x times 1 is what plus x. 1 times x is what plus x. And 1 times 1 is what plus 1. So we have x squared plus x plus x is 2x plus what plus 1. And that's why we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 here. Is that okay? When we use 2 to open this bracket, 2 times x is what 2x squared, 2 times 2 is what 4x, 2 times 1 is what 2. So in this case, we have plus 2 here. Plus 2 minus 3 will give us minus 1. And that is the solution for 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. Okay? Now, inverse function, inverse function is just the opposite value of our function. So if we have f of x equals x over 2 minus 3, we can represent f of x to be equal to y. So we can say let y equals f of x or any other variable you like. Maybe let a or let b or whatever. So y, now what is our f of x? x over 2 minus 3. And that's why we have x over 2 minus 3 here. Now, in what do we do here? We make x subject of formula. And to do that, we can say multiply both sides by 2. And that's why we have 2 times y here. And when 2 is multiplied here, when 2 is multiplied, it, it's, 
multiply like this. So multiplying both sides, we have two times y equals x over two times two minus three times two. So two cancels two here. So what do I have? I have two y equals x minus minus three times two give us minus six, right? And that's why we and that's what we have here. So taking this plus six over because remember we are making x of this formula. We have plus six. So our x equals two y plus six. So our f inverse. Okay, before we do that, we replace y by x. So anywhere we see y, we replace it by what? By x. So we have two x here. And this one becomes our what? Our f inverse of x. So the f inverse of x is giving us what? 2x plus 6. Okay? Let's look at the last example. The last example on inverse function and the last thing we'll be doing in this section, in this part 3 section of mapping and function. It says, given the function f of x equals x 5x minus 2, find f inverse. To find f inverse, you can see in this case, let's say let, let's not use y. Y is used in this solution. Let us, let's use a. So let a equals 5x minus 2. Now, a equals 5x minus 2. Remember, we make x of the formula. So taking minus 2 here, so we have a equals a plus 2 rather equals what? Equals 5x. We divide both sides by 5. Divide by 5. 5 cancels 5. Our x is equal to what? To a plus 2 over 5. Now, what do we do here? We represent, we substitute, or rather, sorry, we put anywhere we see a, we put x, right? So we have f inverse of x. So instead of a, what do I write? I have I write x plus two over five. Now the question did not ask us to find f inverse of x. It asked us to find f inverse of minus one. So to do that, instead of this x, what do I put? I put f inverse of what of minus one. Is that okay? So anywhere I see x, I put what minus one plus two over five, right? So minus one plus two give me what? Give me one. So I have one over and that is the solution to this question. Now, this brings us to the end of, of the series on mapping and function, where we talked about and introduced to us the meaning of domain, of codomain, of range, of the image, and what the meaning of functions are. Then we talked about the types of mapping, the onto mapping, the one-to-one -one mapping, and their representations like the subjective, the bijective, and the injective mappings. Then we also talked about um, composite mapping. Then just we just finished on inverse functions. So these are some questions that might help us to be perfect in this topic, mapping and function. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more videos. Make sure you like and make sure you comment. God bless you.